conditioning later? Yes, I, I also <coughs> did want to get the actual judgment that says uh, upheld your judgment because I also didn't find it on, on SAFNI. But I want to ask you a different question because I think that there is a, a very convoluted explanation to uh, Commissioner Baloyi's question and I just don't want to live with the impression that you don't understand the law on contempt because that's the impression you're creating now. So my understanding is that there is a distinction uh, when, when a party is in contempt in the sense of non-compliance as opposed to the second category of contempt of uh, insulting the, the, the dignity of the court. But if it's contempt in the form of non-compliance, as a judge you can do one of two things. One is you can find them guilty of contempt. And if, they, if you found them guilty of contempt, it is not as if at any future date they can come with an explanation and then you find them not guilty of contempt, if you've already found them guilty of contempt. Now your response that says they are in contempt, but they can explain at a later stage. I don't understand what is the case that supports that, what authority, because that's not in the Auditor General versus Faki case, and of course it's not in the Zuma case. So what is the authority for that proposition? I would have understood that it, it, it was uh, all those authorities that I mentioned, Faki and, uh, and Machabi. But my proposition was the following that where a court finds a respondent to be in contempt of a court order, that court can make that order, provided that that respondent then purges they are, they are, um, the contempt, then they are held to be in contempt. I don't know. No, I don't understand that. That is exactly the convolution I'm com concerned about because it seems that you are confusing the finding of contempt with the penalty for contempt because the question of purge and contempt comes into the second stage of penalty. It has nothing to do with whether you are, con you are guilty of contempt. If you are guilty of contempt, you are guilty of contempt. There is another scenario in which a judge does not say you are guilty of contempt but issues a rule nicer in which they say come and show cause why you should not be found guilty of contempt, but you have not been found guilty of contempt at that stage. And it seems that those three concepts, you are not actually clear about them. And maybe that is why the judgment is as uh, confusing as Commissioner Baloyi is pointing you to, is that you seem to confuse a scenario A, you are not guilty, but we think you may be guilty, come and show cause. Mm -hmm. Scenario B, you are guilty, but you are suspending penalty. If you come and show that you have uh, complied, we may decide you shouldn't go to prison or you shouldn't pay a fine. Yes. But you are still guilty because you didn't comply. Yes. Yes. Th that's how I understand it, uh, uh, Commissioner Gaitobi. And if you look at paragraph C, I'm not sure if we, we understand each other. What was then uh, suspended was the penalty and not the contempt itself. Well, that's precisely the point I was making, is yes. that you seem to regard the penalty and the contempt as one and the same thing. But a person can be found guilty, and you can say, I think you should go to prison, but yes. I'm suspending your penalty until you comply. Because the remedy of a contempt serves one of two purposes. One is to ensure compliance. The other is punitive. Yes. In other words, regardless of whether you comply or not, we're going to send you to prison. And it just seems from the answer you've given that all of that learning from uh, Machabeng, all of that learning from uh, Auditor General and Faki, and all of that learning from Zuma is just conflated and confused. So I wanted to tease out these elements to just make sure that when I leave, I'm convinced that you know the law on contempt because you've applied it. Yes, uh, I, I don't think I can take it any further than that, uh, Mr. Ngaitobi. Uh, could I ask for permission to just follow up, because my question is also on the same judgment. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy mm -hmm. Chief Justice. Um, I, I counted at least five uh, typographical errors in the judgment, but I, that's not my question, but I, I really want to caution this general acceptance that there's nothing wrong with your judgments. But the other thing I want to ask you, 
is your understanding of Section 9 of the Constitution. Because in this judgment, you do reference the Minister of Finance versus Van Heerden uh, mm. judgment. So firstly, I want to ask you what the Huxon test uh, entails. And secondly, how does it differ from the Van Heerden test? Because those are the prima facie questions you should have answered in this judgment that Commissioner Pillay shows mm. that you didn't answer. Yeah. No, I agree. I should have done that. Um, and it, the only defense that I have is that this was because of the urgency of the matter, I had to do it rather speedy. No, but what is the Huxon test? How does it differ from the Van Heerden test? <laughs> I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, I'm not prepared on that. Uh, so, so uh, no, I cannot answer you out of the first on that. Thank you, Mr. Councillor. Um. I, I just have three short questions for you, uh, 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 Ms. Hussein. One is: the, last year we interviewed for this position. We kept it open. One of the presentations we got was from the then chairperson advocate, Mark. He gave us a diagnostic report. Have you read it? Unfortunately not. I haven't seen it. So you don't know that there is currently a backlog of five years at the Water Tribunal? Um, I do know that there is a backlog. Um, and the reason I know that is because for my, for my preparation for this interview, I watched that interview last year where you asked those questions um, when, and you gave, a, you gave a few instances of matters where there have been a backlog of about five to six years. Yes. So I am aware of the backlog, but I unfortunately have not been privy to the diagnostic report. And then, uh, because it seems to me if I was trying to get this job, the, and I was aware, fortunately, as you say, because I've watched the interview, you would be aware of the diagnostic report and you would have bothered to lay your hands on it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a help to, did you, to obtain it. When you say you were not able, did you try to get it? I did. I did a, I did a search in the web, um, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to find it. It could be there, but it's just perhaps for some reason I, could, I, I didn't get a hold of it. Yes, but you could have just sent an email and asked for it. I, I can see that. Now, the second question I want to ask you is when I look at your CV, uh, you attach three letters of recommendation and so I was trying to see what people say about you but then I realized that the first one is from Fergus Blackie but it's 31 October 2013 the second one is from Peter van Black who's a member of our bar but it's also 25th August 2014 and the last one is from Twenna Incorporated which is on the 13th of February 2012 so none of those actually tell us anything about your ability to take this role. In fact, one of them was about you applying for pupillage. Um, that is correct. Those letters were prepared um, in pursuance of me um, applying for pupillage. Um, I haven't obtained, perhaps it was a shortcoming on my side, that I haven't obtained anything um, more current but those are letters that were prepared for pupillage. Then the last thing is the most recent judgment of the Constitutional Court relating to water is yes. the Lotta case. What was that case about and what did the Constitutional Court say? Um, it was a unanimous decision by the Constitutional Court in terms of which um, the right in terms of Section 25 um, to trade, to well, to transfer water use entitlements to third parties was um, permitted, firstly, and the sec second leg was that a, um, a bit, sorry, that compensation in terms of that transfer would also be permitted. Those were, um, those findings were in terms of the act itself. What did the judge say, uh, Judge Matlang? Um, in a nutshell, I would think I would say that um, the trans the the transfer um, of the license was permitted to third parties, um, but there was also towards the end of the judgment, um, I think it was part of an analysis to an epilogue, which. Um, uh, 
Uh, I think that's fine. The, the first part is fine. The other two, we can figure that out later. Thank you. <laughs> All Thank right. you. Just a follow-up, quick follow-up, DCJ. Sorry? Uh, follow yeah, carry on. Uh, no, no. The question is, what if we say we shouldn't appoint you now with the hope that when you come next time, there will be some improvement from all the criticisms observed here? Do you think it will be unfair? <laughs> That's a difficult question, um, Commissioner Malema. Um, I'm, I'm fairly optimistic uh, that um, the commission will be amenable and in giving me the opportunity, you know, to say I'm a candidate of improvement. I've shown with my judgment that I can do better. So in having to say to the commission, no, I'll come back the second time, I think I'll sound like a pessimist. Uh, I just want to remain optimistic to say I'm doing good and I'm doing better. And the continuous exposure, I'm currently acting as a judge, it's an exposure. It's giving me an opportunity to say, Tembi, do better. So I'll appreciate if the commission could actually uh, decide uh, contrary, uh, Commissioner. Thank you. Shouldn't do, we give you more extension through the JP of X. <laughs> Thank you, DCG. I'm available to serve. I'm available to serve, Commissioner. Commissioner K.